Fuchs, I'm Tom Vassell, and I just got back last week from the Dice Tower Cruise, which was a fantastic experience. 800 plus people on a boat, playing games, also doing cruise stuff. You should consider doing it in 2021. It's amazing. But I'm not here really to talk about that. I want to talk about the games that were played on the cruise. Now, we had the full Dice Tower and Library. This is the first time it's really been stress tested with a group of people, and there were a few problems. Some of the data here is not 100% accurate because a few games, uh, the scanning didn't work right on them, and we're fixing that sort of thing and kind of finding out how it works as we go along. Um, and I also want to mention there were a few games set up on hot games tables. Uh, there was Aquatica, which was constantly in play. There's Maracaibo, also constantly in play. Uh, the Crew, a trick-taking game, cooperative game, very, very popular, constantly in play. And then On Mars, which was played a few times, not as much as I thought it would be, mostly because I think the rule book is fairly intimidating for that game. But I wanted to talk about the games, and I have the top 15 games, essentially, that were checked out of the library, uh, and just see what we think of them. So, so first of all, there was a, a tie between the Isle of Cats, Let's Make a Bus Route, and Blitzkrieg. So the Isle of Cats, we actually had two copies of that one, and uh, so that's a very popular new game. A lot of people are excited about that one. Uh, I, I, I foresee this one being popular all year round, honestly. Let's make a bus route. Got some buzz because both Z and Mike said it was a fantastic game. A, a roll and write kind of game, but where you're all writing on the same board. I haven't played this one yet. And I think this is a game that people want to play because you're going to find it only in a library. And then Blitzkrieg, two-player game, so it's easier to get out and stuff. And again, this one got high praise for many people, myself included, which is why I think that one was out. Then we have Eco's First Continent. This one was a, a bit of a surprise to me. I knew, I mean, AEG's games are pretty popular at this point in time. And this one here with the kind of bingo-esque thing to it, we only had one copy of this one. I'm fixing that, adding another copy because it was this popular, but went really well. After that, this one's a surprise to me, Raptor. Now, again, it's two players, so it's easier to get to the table than other games. But still, this is a much older game, and I think part of the buzz is because Z has been giving this one love for a long time, and people see it and want to check it out. Also, that's some pretty cool pieces. Then we have Copenhagen. Now, I had two copies of Copenhagen, and they were I, I was watching it just constantly being checked out. Uh, Copenhagen is a, a kind of a gateway game of sorts with the Tetris style pieces. There's a lot of Tetris piece games out there right now. I mean, it's the second one we've seen. We've seen the Isle of Cats, uh, but Copenhagen probably had a leg up just because it's been out longer and easier to teach. Then back to AEG with Tiny Towns. I believe one copy of Tiny Towns in the library. Again, this is what I'm going to fix. If it was checked out this much with one copy, we need to get two in there. And again, has that bingo-esque thing where people are calling out cubes and you're putting them on the board and has a new expansion out now. Just this one was constantly being played. Now we jump over to Plan B Games. I had two copies of this, and that's Azul Stained Glass of Sintra. Of course, Azul, very popular. Azul itself uh, was 22 on the list. Um, but the, the sequel to Azul, which a lot of people say they don't, you know, it I hasn't got the buzz that the original one did, but it look, just looks cool. After that, Paladins of the West Kingdom. Now, Architects is on the list, and in fact, I have two copies of Architects and only one copy of Paladins, something I fixed. I have more copies of Paladins being added to the library. Uh, but Paladins, the heavier Euro game, a lot of people were really enamored with this one. Then the biggest surprise to me is the next game, and that's Cities Skylines, the board game. This one's a big surprise to me, not because I wasn't a huge fan of it. I don't care about that part. Uh, I just never saw it being played. I mean, I guess it must have been played, where you're cooperatively building a city. And then the computer game is really popular, too, so there's some of that. We'll see how this one settles in. But again, this was a big surprise to me. Then Century Golem Edition. Now, Century Spice Road is on the list. It was at 21. So, very popular game. Um, but the Golem Edition, I can only assume a lot of people just haven't played that one. They had Spice Road, and they just want to see what the other one looked like. So, there's that. Number four is Azul Summer Pavilion. It's the newest Azul. Azul's extremely popular. What makes this impressive is I had two copies of Stained Glass Sintra and only one a Summer Pavilion. 
I don't know that this one was ever in the library. Just constantly out, constantly being played. Number three is Everdell. This one we had two copies of, and this one is kind of a pain because you have to build that tree every time. In fact, for a while I just saw the tree just sitting there. It was not the tree wasn't even put back in a box. People just grabbing it and moving it with it. This is not a new game per se. It's I think two years old at this point. Very popular, one that people are jumping into and playing. Number two, we also had two copies of Imperial Settlers, Empires of the North. This one scales really well. You can play two, three, or four. I believe we have expansions in one of them. Uh, so if you want to play with the different things. But just this Imperial Settlers is extremely popular. But I don't even see the regular Imperial Settlers on my list here. So go figure. The Empires of the North has supplanted that at least on this particular list. And then the number one game, which you probably have already guessed. I had two copies of it. I'm adding a third copy very soon. And that's Wingspan. Of course. And now, of course, my Wingspans are really blinged out, too. I know people like that sort of thing. But what's interesting to me about uh, Wingspan in particular is it was used so much that my Wingspan tower has been murdered. It can't even be put together at this point, the little dice tower. Uh, I don't know if I should glue one together or buy a wooden one. I'm sure not. Uh, I'm not sure how to fix that. It's not the end of the world. You can just roll the dice on the table. But definitely, Wingspan just it was very popular last year on the cruise, you know, and it had just come out then in uh, 2019. But here, just extremely popular. So there you go. Other games that I noticed that were fairly popular, people still want to play Tapestry, Quacks of Quedlingburg, Point Salad, a nice small game that did really well. Unmatched was checked out more times than I thought. Chocolate Factory. Atlantis Rising was extremely popular. Problem is we only had one copy of that, and it takes a while. So, you know, there was constantly people asking about that one. Uh, the Giant Ice Cool was checked out several times. The Centuries, Gizmos was, was did really well. Maracaibo was checked out a bunch of times, con even considering it was on the hot game table. So a lot of cool games that were checked out here. And I believe we had 800 different games. Oh, no, way more than 800. Maybe 900 to 1,000 games of the 1,500 we brought were checked out at one point. So pretty good. It was a lot of fun. I like these kind of stats. I'll try to bring you to you after different conventions just so you can kind of figure out what games are hip and popular, I suppose. Although, you play what you want, right? Anyway, those are the top games on the cruise. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Vassell, and this is The Dice Tower.